The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted this chart up here today. It's a, uh, I, I couldn't believe it, folks. This happened when I was uh, over in the UK doing the seminar with Tom Hugard and Dr. David Paul. Uh, so one, and Al Brooks, I wanted to show you this, this uh, chart pattern because this really blew me away. This was basically a chart pattern. Okay, now it looks like you can see it's a beautiful ABCD pattern. You can just see the 135 pattern. You can see the volume. Folks, do you know what this is? This is the betting line for the big horse race that was happening last Saturday in London. That's how they that's how they do these things. I mean, my gosh, it's the same ABCD that we deal with all the time. Well, what's going to be interesting now is we're going to see how this works in real life as far as how these things move because we have something happening today as we speak, and we're going to try to work this out so you folks can take a look at it for what it's worth. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. But all we're going to do now is we're going to move this over just a tiny bit so I can see the doggone thing. And then I think we'll be a little bit better. And I want to get this chart up right here, which is this is what this is the, the same thing that the betting guys are doing is uh, doing the same thing we're doing with numbers here. So all we're going to do now is share the screen. By the way, our guest today will be Shane Smolian, thewolftrader.com. And then on Tuesday, uh, I think we have a free day. Wednesday, we have none other than Mr. Joe DiNapoli, who will do the whole show because we don't get to hear him very often once a month. And then also we're going to hear uh, Tim Bost uh, on Thursday. So now, as you can see here, these are the standard deviations from the mean in the S&P 500. And if you remember, I've been talking about this level of 4430 for a very long time. I want you to see the bottom red line down here, folks. You see that 4430 right over there on the right? That should happen at 1230 uh, in about, uh, let's see, 11. Yeah, in about, let me see, it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, in just about an hour, I believe, I'll post the, the thing. But if we get below that, if we get below that, that means there's trouble in River City. But look how these things have bounced off these numbers. And that, that is the same thing that the betting, that the using betted line at, at uh, Betfair and uh, what was the other one, uh, William Hill and uh, several of the others. They post these charts that shows you how the betting line moves. And that's the same thing we're doing when we're trading stocks. You know, people are buying at some price and selling it at another. So it's really amazing how those things really lined up. Now, several of you asked me to show you, uh, you know, the family I was staying with uh, in London. I'll be happy to post that here for you because uh, they're highly uh, advanced mathematicians, and I, I think you'll be interested to see what their family looks like because it's, uh, it's a pretty cool family. It happened to be in the rain that day, but you can see here they had all their Fibonacci clothes on. And this is actual picture, folks, by a photographer of a snail family. <laughs> and this, this flower happened to be just above it to look like an umbrella. But I thought you'd get a, a big kick out of that. Anyway, uh, let's just move on to the thing that we want to talk about, and that is the old stop and pee here. So what we're watching for is that standard deviation coming in here very, very shortly. I'm going to bring it up because I'll get the chart up here so we'll be able to see it. The last chart I had was at... Uh, 4434 let's just get the old thing moving here one second all right uh, all righty here we go up in there okay and there you go uh, this is the artificial low artificial intelligence program that we're looking at said that we should be down in here just around that 430 level at uh, of course we got a long way to go so it could be a lot more Yes, uh, that was a that was a 30 minute chart uh, on a, a standard deviation. Yes, Johnny, it was. But those are the numbers that these algorithmic traders use to push these markets around, and uh, they do it all the time. So that's the main thing is remember that uh, everybody does something a little bit differently. But that's what we're watching there. And also, finally, I wanted to show you the last one because I posted this uh, over a week ago. 
Uh, let's just get it down here so you'll be able to see it. You're going to be able to see that 430 level again. Hold on one second. It's going to be just a tiny bit lower this time because the standard deviation has changed. Uh-oh. Just a second here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. Here's where we want to go. Just a second. Boy, don't ever let an Italian do a job with a mouse unless he's an exterminator. Okay, move this up here. Okay, here's where we are. You can see the ABCDs here. The low that we're looking at right here, boys and girls, you see that low right there? That's a 382. This also is a 135 pattern. I posted that in the video to the 24-7 folks last night to get short at... Uh, at uh, 44.90, uh, the high was 44.91. That was a perfect 3.82 off of this high right here. And so that's what we're waiting to see is what happens when we get down to this level at the key time that we're going to be watching here uh, early this morning to see if that's going to be uh, that's, that's going to be accurate. Okay, now there's a couple other things that have to be really uh, taken into account today, folks. Uh, and that is we've got something really big getting ready to happen very, very soon. And it's something that we've been bearish on for a very long time. And I wanted to get this up here so you folks can uh, remind ourselves where we are here with this. Now, this is, of course, a technical picture. It has nothing to do with the fundamentals. And uh, this is the uh, weekly, uh, excuse me, this is the daily bond chart. Let's try it again, Larry. It's the weekly bond chart. And if you remember, these are the times, 1, 3, and 5 is when the Fed was in there. The last time was right here, setting right at the 61% retracement of 0.3, a downtrend, perfect symmetry between 1, 3, and 5. And now we have, as you can see here, we are within a, within a, a day's trading, or even today, yeah, I believe it'll be sometime this week would be my guess. But the number to watch, folks, here is 139 here uh, in the in the thing. Now, one of two things is going to happen here, and it'll usually be one or the other. Uh, it's either going to collapse through that 1.618 level or it's going to have a bounce of about $10,000. Because we've dropped, uh, you know, a, a big drop here from 164, you know, down to where we are. We're down over 20, down 20 grand from that high we made up here. And look at this, folks. That's every single week. And each of the rallies have just been minor, tiny ABCDs. I mean, this just didn't have any friends at all. Uh, the interest rates are going higher, folks. It doesn't make any difference what this bounce is from here. Well, it will make a difference because that'll tell you the strength of what these interest rates are going to do. But I think it's going to be, uh, you're, Duffy's right, the rate, the drop of this, <laughs> the rate drop, Oh, boy, oh, boy. Let's try putting the words together. The increase in the interest rates has been historic, and I think history is just starting, really. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, we see that in all the charts that we look at with the interest rates. We've talked about this yield curve, so many uh, bonds. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Duffy, I have to correct you on something. The quote from Goldfinger is, Mr. Bond, I, he said, do you expect me to talk and Mr. Goldfinger said, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. The reason why I know that, that was Mark Douglas's favorite Bond film, and he quoted that all the time. All right, boys and girls, we'll be right back with a couple more interesting charts. 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the uh, German DAX, and also you can see the ABCD formations that are there. Uh, I'm also posting the one for the FTSE, and this one's a little different because it's been stronger. As you can see here, it's completed the big ABCD pattern up here with a three drive to a top pattern, and it sold off. And so those are just a few of the patterns that uh, we're watching here uh, today as we look across the board. I'm not, uh, several questions came to me over the weekend uh, about how does this war affect folks over my pay grade. I know how to do one thing, and that is find ABCD patterns on short and uh, intermediate time frames and try to know what my risk is. That's what I do. I don't listen to this stuff. I mean, I was in London for eight, nine, almost 10 days. I didn't get to hear the news, thank God. I didn't know what was going on, and uh, it didn't have anything to, it didn't make any difference uh, to what uh, what we were looking at. I was able to do, we were able to do three trades during the time, the day trading day that we did. We had a couple others that we just missed, but we, uh, we had a very good day, Tom and I trading together in a pretty substantial account. We made just under 5% per the day uh, with virtually no heat at all. And then my deal with these folks was I would follow through for another couple weeks and we're finishing this last week here with a really nice run here. We've had uh, six winners and one loser. Our loser today uh, was in the gold and we just missed reversing on it, which would have made everything back plus some, but that was our first uh, first loss but we, uh, we like I mentioned you know we sold the S&P last night at the 382 at uh, you know 4490 and uh, we covered that at uh, 44 uh, 4445 and we're waiting to go long here in around 1230 uh, in a, just about an hour we'll be able to watch this now if it's if it's below 4400 here uh, that's going to really be a problem for the bulls folks but I really think it's going to hold uh, I don't know what the last price was on that S&P, but I believe that 40, that 4430 is going to be very important because that is, you know, setting at that one standard deviation and going below that is going to be. But the, you know, the Dow Jones is acting much better than the other ones. You know, that's it. So anyway, that's uh, what we're paying attention to as we watch some of these things here uh, trade today. I wanted to uh, bring another uh, chart to your attention here because uh, we were talking about the uh, treasury the treasury bonds and I also want to show you 
uh, you know, what's going on with the Treasury notes, because it also is in an area where uh, it's going to be very, very uh, close to all of the AB. Remember, this is a weekly chart, folks. And as you remember, you know, we've been bearish this thing for a very long time. I mean, look at this up here. This is when they were feeding us. Ah, I don't want to go into that. There, this was the old, well, you know, negative interest rate stuff. Now it's too, too high of interest rates. Anyway, see, we're coming down really fast on these uh, Treasury notes, okay? So we're either going to go blasting through that you know, we are going to go through it. The question is, are we going to have a little bit of a bounce before that time? And, folks, the interest rate is increasing. Uh, the interest rates are increasing. And not only that, the shorts are piling in. I mean, the interest rate, uh, the open interest in this darn thing is increasing. That tells you that this market is extremely, extremely bearish because they keep adding to it. Well, that, that will lead to a really strong short covering rally. That's why... If you follow these things, look at that 1.618 expansion down there because if you get to that point and it doesn't turn, you know, wow, you know, this thing's going to really uh, fall out of bed. But uh, that's my two cents worth just looking at the chart. So that's pretty much what we're paying attention to. Now, there's another one today that's very, very important that had a huge drop in open interest on Friday. We alerted the folks on the video last night uh, the importance of this. I'll get this up here so we can... Uh, Take a quick look at it, and uh, it's going to be over here. Just a second. It take me a second. Oh, there it is. Okay, here's where we are. Get this up here so we can take a quick look at this one. This is a really interesting one because we hit it spot on today. We did make that double top up here at that uh, 566 level. We took out this high. Over here by just a little bit, we had a big drop in open interest on Friday in the May um, natural gas of 31000 It wasn't picked up by the other contracts, so there was a net change of $6,000 on an up move like that. That is not bullish, folks. That means that was short covering. We had more of it today. We dropped all the way down to around 622 last night, and then went up, rallied $4,000 to get up to a new high, and then we backed off again. So... Those are the things that we're trying to pay attention to as we look at some of these things because, you know, they're very interesting because the swings we're having are, you know, they're phenomenal. This, remember, this has just got a, you know, I think the margin on this thing only like 3,500 or something like that. So it's really an interesting one, you know, to be trading if you're going to be trading something where you don't have to worry about, you know, high interest rates or high margin requirements and I know some of these are getting ridiculous in the futures for the stock indices and also for gold and also for crude oil. But, of course, you have many gold and many crude, so that helps uh, a little bit uh, on that. Okay, now, the next one we want to talk about here, which everyone wants to see, anybody, I do anyway, that's the main thing. Oh, just a second. I got it ready to go, and then I can't find it, so give me a second here. I'm only a minute away from getting this done, I hope. That's what I'm saying. And here it is right here. And this is one of my favorite things to trade along with my good buddy, Mr. Z. And news here, extremely bullish usually. Not as bullish as before, but still pretty bullish. I want to get this up here. This is the uh, a 15-minute chart on soybeans. You can see the ABCD pattern that we had last night uh, hanging right there at the 382. And, of course, with the 135 pattern following it right afterwards, it left yourself open for a really good uh, move to the downside to the tune of just about a thousand bucks in this move here about 750 to 800 dollars and that turned out to be a pretty good and that completed the a b c d to the downside too folks so now you probably could have bought it down there but i was i was happy enough with the hit the cash register ka-ching ka-ching and you know move on uh, to the next one. So let's uh, remind ourselves that I have to show you one other thing that was sent to us by a good friend uh, over in uh, Longboat Key, Florida. Uh, good old country boy from uh, Missouri. Hold on one second here. That's old Dr. Mark P. We're going to get this up. You got to see this, folks. You talk about how things have changed since I was growing up. You got to take a look at this, folks. This was our a, a, a division of our example of Gatorade, folks. <laughs> this is what we had for a, uh, a sports drink when I was a kid, drinking out of the hose. We we also took our baths out of that same hose, too. Anyway, I thought that was a little funny, so that was very, very good. I want to thank old Dr. Dr. Mark for that one. 
That's a very, very good one to pay close attention. Oh, one other thing. Basil Chapman's got his webinar coming up this Wednesday, I believe, folks. I try to get to it, folks, because he really knows the history of these markets. And uh, I think it's it's something you ought to pay attention to. I, I'm going to sure, certainly be there, but he, he does a great job with his opening call stuff. Uh, and, you know, you just have to be a member of it to go in. And it, it's certainly worth it to watch what Basil has. I, I really enjoy it because of historical things that he brings up. And I, I think those are worth the price of admission. Plus, I like the way that he counts the waves because he uses it with letters instead of numbers. And he keeps it very simple. And he's got his way of counting and that works extremely well for him. And it's a, basically a similar type modification of you know, wave structure and it, it works and that's the bottom line. You know, it, the problem is it doesn't work all the time and there's where the problem lies for most of these folks is you can't really uh, do that. Now we're going to have um, Shane Smolian, the wolftrader.com coming up next uh, very, very shortly. So uh, it's very important. I wanted to show you this one. This happened last week when we were, uh, uh, when I was out of the office over there, this was the, uh, the 61% uh, retracement that we had in the uh, NASDAQ. And as you can see, we're selling off, you know, quite rapidly. We're not down to, you know, we're, we're just having a normal correction, folks. This is not really anything very big. If we get, let's, let me see if I can get the last price of this thing up here. Yeah, we're trading at 44.28 right now uh, in the S&P. Uh-oh, what happened to my data? Yeah, 44.28. And as long as we stay above 4,400 in the next, uh, Next hour, I think we're going to be okay. But watch this. Watch this from 12:30 on, 12:30 to the end of the day. Uh, that could be a big reversal. So you know, because the all we've done, all we've done in the uh, the YM, the Dow Jones E Mini, is take out the lows of uh, the overnight lows from we had last night, and we had huge swings last night, folks. We had 300 point swings in that thing, like it. Oh no, wait, 300. Wait, 44, no, 150 point swings in that thing. So it's moving around quite a bit. And of course, bonds just keep going lower and lower and lower. We're getting close to 139, folks. 139.08 in the bonds is the 1.618 expansion. Uh, write yourself a little ticket on that one. 877 927 6648. I guess no one told me uh, that this was going to be a. Where is the. Uh, the music. Uh, what did I do wrong now? One minute to go. Oh, wow! I'm showing that it time's over. What's up? What's going on with that? Well, Mr. Shane Smolian will be our guest today. Tomorrow, I believe. I'm not sure. I haven't checked the calendar. I know we have Joe D. Napoli is on Wednesday for the full hour. Thursday, I know we have Mr. Um, Tim Bost, and Friday we are closed for the good holiday of Good Friday, probably one of the last Good Friday holidays I'll ever let us have. It'll probably be going to the way of the uh, hula hoop and some of the other things that we've seen over the periods of time. So that's pretty much it, boys and girls. So we're waiting to hear from Mr. Shane Smolian. I don't know what happened to the evening break or the morning break here, but it didn't occur. So not going to worry about it too much. All right, we'll be right back with Shane Smolian, folks, the wolftrader.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I believe we have Shane Smollies, WolfTraderFutures.com on the line. Shane, are you there? Good morning. Is this Duke and Duke? This is the offices, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, your forecast of a lower market coming into the day is certainly right. You want to tell the folks what you're looking at, my friend? Absolutely. So today we are going to talk about the geomagnetic storm. And this is a big topic, Larry. I don't think people realize this. And this, I think this ties into astrology, too, because it's talking about how uh, magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields affect the moods of the populace. Now, your, your good friend Arch Crawford is really the expert on this topic, so I would love to hear from him one day on this. If you could get him to come back out of retirement, that would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Um, I'm going to talk to you about a geomagnetic storm that we had on March 31st. So people may not know what this is. So I have a visual here. This is an image here showing what happens. Uh, the, the sun makes these sunspots, and there's, there's these ejections that come off, and you get these geomagnetic storms. So when this when the storm comes off, it takes a couple of days to reach the Earth. And the we have our, uh, our magnetic fields here that help deflect these particles and protect the Earth. Uh, but it creates these beautiful lights in the sky. It creates the northern lights. And when these storms come, uh, it can bring the lights down very far south. And this particular storm brought them all the way down to New York City for the first time in over 40 years. So uh, this is great. This is uh, astrophysics. But what does this have to do uh, you know, that with, was my with, question, my friend. That was my question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're doing a little science lesson here today. But this is another image of her. This is another visualization of the Earth's magnetic fields uh, protecting us and then creating this this illumination that helps us well we had a storm on 331 uh which was very significant now this actually happened on 328 the the storm came off the sun two of them came off and they merged uh it hits the earth on march 31st now the northern lights were visible uh in new york city for the first time in 40 years that's how strong the storm was 
This has a depressive effect on markets for at least one week. Uh, I think in this case, it's even more. Uh, the Federal Reserve of Atlanta wrote about this. I'm going to talk about statistics and data from the Federal Reserve of Atlanta uh, about this. Now, you may think that's weird that the Fed's talking about geomagnetic storms, but they understand how these things affect markets. Believe me, Larry. And so I, I strongly believe that they look at the astrology and the cycles, too. And I, this, to me, this is proof of it. Uh, the, the, the Fed speculated that this uh, affects the moods of investors. In other words, it creates a negative mood on investors. And so what we have here is this is a, this is a graph of what happened. Uh, this, th this is from NOAA. You can see as the geomagnetic storm approaches, you can see the activity increasing. The temperature jumps up here. The speed jumps up here. Uh, the density jumps up here. So all of these particles are coming and bombarding the Earth. And so we can track exactly when this comes to the Earth and you know, see when it's passing over us, okay? So that's, that's important. Here's another view of it here. Uh, you can see there's this huge jump up here. Uh, in the density of the particles, and then the speed gets up to about 600 kilometers per second. Uh, so these are very fast-moving particles coming around us. So what does it have to do with the market? Well, first of all, these sunspots, these, these geomagnetic storms tend to come after the sunspots form. So the sunspots are the dashed line here, the geomagnetic storm is the solid line. So we can kind of see these coming a little bit, but we don't really know. We, got, we just have a very short notice. Now, this is the actual solar storm activity of the year. Uh, and this is average. So what happens is it runs up into into March, falls down into July, it goes back up into October. So Larry, can you see any patterns here on this chart relating to stock markets? Can you see any patterns there? Uh, I, I'm not be, I'm not able to see the the chart the way that it's supposed to be set up because okay. I okay. hold on a second. I, I well, I'll, I'll I, keep going I, here. So what I, I'm going to going to give people a hint here. So this is an actual solar cycle of the Dow Jones. This is historical going back to the early 1900s. And what we find is that these two charts are inverse. These two charts are inverse. So the more that the sun releases these solar flares, the lower that the market goes. And it is exactly correlated. It goes all the way down into February, into April. Oh, as the sol solar storm activity increases, as the solar storm activity decreases, the market goes back up. And then as the solar storm activity increases into October, the market falls, et cetera. There is, it is an exact mirror of the way that the S&P behaves. So this is direct evidence that what's happening on the sun with these storms is affecting the markets. Okay, we'll be right back with WolfTraderFutures.com. Shane Smolian, folks, we'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with the wolftrader.com, Shane Smolian himself. Shane, would you like to continue, please? So, absolutely. So, we're showing here on the long term the solar cycle activity. Solar storms correlate with the S&P the, and the Dow Jones. But take a look at this next chart. This next chart is actually what happened when the storm passed over. So, right when the storm passed over, you can see that the S&P was rallying on this kind of following this arc path that jumps up. And then the geomagnetic storm hits, and that was the end of it. It just completely ended the rally. And uh, this is what the data shows from the Federal Reserve. Uh, the Federal Reserve actually tracks what's going on here with U.S. stock returns uh, on all these different markets, NASDAQ, S&P, Amex, New York Stock Exchange. And this is uh, comparing what happens after the geomagnetic storm the week after versus a normal bad day, a normal, sorry, a normal day on the S&P on the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Amex, and all of these markets are lower across the board uh, for the week after this geomagnetic storm. So this is a real event. Uh, there's plenty of data on this. They also track the large versus the small caps. And uh, essentially, the smaller the, the cap of the, of the stock, the more it's affected by these geomagnetic storms. And the, the, the thesis was that it's likely affecting the mood of the smaller investors because the smaller investors affect in these uh, invest in these smaller micro cap stocks or the institutions if in, are investing in the larger stocks so it's 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 just a fascinating study on this uh, and i think this this definitely ties into the astro work that we do but again this is from the federal reserve of atlanta they did a study on this you can look this up it's online uh, I, I will go more into this with subscribers at a later date i just wanted to bring this to the attention because uh, it it stonewall it stonewalled the the rally the minute that this thing passed over Earth and it was a strong storm. Yeah, I, I saw it in the news that it was uh, something that they hadn't seen in a long time. So, and you're right, Arch did do that, did do a lot of work on that because I remember over the 40 years that I've known him seeing some of those reports. So, over my pay grade, buddy, but you make a good case for it. So, what else you're looking at? Well. Um, we follow the stelium, so I don't know. You know, I've been talking about this planetary stelium. I just want to give people an update in terms of where we are on this, and there's an outlier case forming here. Now we're we're in the last peak of the stelium. You can see that the planets are still pretty tightly aligned here, and this tends to draw markets up for the most part. Uh, but there is an example here. What I want to show you is we have three, uh, four peaks this year. This stelium is four peaks. The largest peak occurred in March, right with that rally. Uh, and then there's a fourth peak here. Then there's no more stelium peaks for the rest of 2022. So I think this was helping to hold up the market. I think once these pass, I think we're going to have much, much lower prices coming on this S&P. But I want to look at this little peak three to four example here because we're going to go back to COVID here. Now, let me explain to you what happened here. So in COVID, there was a series of three peaks here. There was peak one, peak two, peak three. Now, the the, the pattern that we're seeing here is – that the market tends to peak near or right after the highest stelium peak. So right here, here's the highest stelium peak and peak two. The market runs up for a little bit and falls down. But what we've seen this, we saw this in 2009 too, is that sometimes that after the, if there's another lower peak, 
the market can decline all the way into that. We saw this during COVID where the peaks, sometimes they can mark a low. This also happened in 2009, and we can go back in, two, in 1987 this happened. So the, the lower peak also marked a low. So there's an outside chance that I think this is happening now. And if this happens, if this scenario plays out, then we could be looking at some type of a low coming in around early May, or early May, maybe the first week of May, something like that, if it follows the same pattern. Either way, if it doesn't follow this pattern, when we get past May, the situation gets much, much worse for equities. So I think, you know, the lifeboat has come back. How many times is a lifeboat going to come by for people? Okay, we had a rally. This is the chance. I think from here on out, we're going to have problems with this market. Uh, so let me talk to you about where we are now on the market. There's a similar situation here. So uh, j again, this, this is the COVID chart here. This is the chart that we have now. We have the four peaks. We have peak one, peak two, peak three. And then here's your fourth stelium peak here. Uh, it looks very similar to what we saw during COVID. So if that plays out again, as it did in, in 2009, as it did in 1987, there is a chance. I'm not gonna say it's gonna happen for sure, but there is a good chance based upon the previous behavior that this could mark some type of, a, of an interim low into here in the first week of May. And we could have a, a, a scenario like that playing out. Wow. I know that NASA, I, they're posting in the room here that NASA watches solar storms. Well, everybody has to. I mean, if you're sending spaceships up there, you better be aware when these things are happening because you don't want to send a spaceship in the midst of a solar storm, do you? Oh, no, abs absolutely. I mean, that's that's yeah. one of the big concerns with space travel, the radiation exposure, and then you're crashing into objects. And I mean, it's, it's space travel is no joke. Uh, it, it is yeah. you're, you're exposed well. to all different types of things. I told you that my wife gave me a ticket on space travel. Did you know that for my birthday no, on the 28th no, of July? I, it only I went, the problem was it's a one-way ticket, and I don't know what she meant by <laughs> that, but I, I guess I figured it out. little Rodney Dangerfield for you, my friend. Okay, uh, tell us, you have a, new, a webinar or something coming up this weekend that, you, that you'd like the folks to uh, take a look at maybe? Sure. Uh, well, we talk every Every uh, Saturday we have a webinar. We've been talking about lately about moving averages, optimizing moving averages for charts. Uh, there's there's certain moving averages actually on the S&P right now. Uh, one of the breakout moving averages is, is the, like the 14. It just crossed through that, so it's in a breakout lower. But we're kind mm -hmm. of in this process of optimizing moving averages to help people get different levels they can look at for support and resistance on the markets. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably talk about the storm some more, the geomagnetic storm too. Well, you know, these folks that uh, do these uh, logarithmic trading, they knew all about these moving averages and all the variations of them because that's how they move these markets around by looking at the standard deviations of the mean and, and the other things that are involved with these things. And you can see them move dramatically off of these numbers. So I think it's Absolutely. an important thing to important thing to look at one other question i want to ask you is uh the next when's our next lunar event don't we have a full moon coming up here pretty soon or the new uh, moon, wouldn't it the new moon i don't know the exact date on that i don't have that in front of me um i i didn't have it either so coming up soon uh yeah. let me oh, let me I talk have... to you real go, yeah go ahead. go ahead sorry please continue so uh, let me let me talk to you. So I'm just I'm looking at the Nasdaq here. So this is the Nasdaq here. You can see this is the death cross. The 50 crossed below uh, below the 200 here, and it got rejected pretty strongly uh, above. But you know once it got to that 200 moving average right there, uh, this is a chart that I wanted to show people. Uh, this is dealing with the the four hour chart. So essentially what happened here is uh, the the S and P has been declining in a in a rather complex fashion, and so. There's these lines that form called uh, – they're called speed lines. And essentially uh, what these things do is they, they, um, they, they go through these retracement levels and then they, they extend the line out. And you can see the S&P goes all the way up here to the 786 out here. And, uh, and this was where it stopped. And it's in the process now of making a parabolic – it's making a – it made a parabolic rise. Now it's making a mirror, a GAN mirror. So if it keeps mm -hmm. following this line, it'll it'll come down below that 4,400 level uh, if it keeps following that line right there. So I thought that was an interesting intraday chart to look at too. Now, one of the things I talk about with people too is to watch Bitcoin because Bitcoin le is leading the S&P. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that when we get back. Yes, we'll be right back with WolfTraderFutures.com. Shane Smullyan, folks, in just a few minutes.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Okay, we're back, folks. We're chatting with Shane Smolian, the Wolf Trade Futures .com. Please continue, my friend. Okay, so real quick, just the full moon is going to be on the 16th of April. It's at 26 degrees of Libra. It's also at a similar degree to Saturn, Neptune, and Jupiter on those dates too. So just to kind of throw that out there, that's that can be a completion or a turning point uh, if we are going down. Now, Bitcoin. This is one thing I, I really want to emphasize to people, and I've talked about this before. Bitcoin is leading the S&P, guys, since 2020. I know people want to look into different cryptos and try to pick and choose. But for the most part, this has been leading the S&P uh, at every turn. It, le it led it in 2020 on the way down. It led it on the rally up. It led it on the, the last turn down. So uh, Bitcoin is heading lower. So watch Bitcoin if you want to understand the S&P right now because it's turned into a risk on asset. There is also a time here where gold, Bitcoin, and S&P can all fall together. We saw this during covid this is a period that I would look for if we're looking for some type of a dead center decline. So uh, if we do get an alignment between Bitcoin, gold, and S&P, I think that's what we should be looking for for the potential of uh, you know, the center of a rally or the, the end of a rally. Then we should be looking at what assets are, are, are acting the best during that decline. And those are the ones we should be looking at when that occurs. But it's very tough for that to occur, but it, when it does, that's usually dead center in a decline. So we haven't seen that yet. Gold's still kind of wandering up, but Bitcoin is headed down. Uh, it just moved out. The spread that we look at on, on Bitcoin uh, actually just went sell today, and gold just went by on that spread. So they're not they're not going down together yet, but uh, I just want to point that out to people that Bitcoin is something to watch 
uh, in this recent age. And we really have to study these charts in recent years because these things change very quickly. But right now, that's the trend on Bitcoin for sure. Well, that's listen. That's really great listening to you and all the stuff that you have. So please take care over there and live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Stay Thank on the you. safe side of the street, my friend. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, you bet, so much. Folks. It's Shane Smolian, folks, WolfTraderFutures.com. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Don't forget, Wednesday we have Joe DiNapoli. Thursday is Tim Boss. See you tomorrow, folks.